Hello and welcome to the U.S. Space and Rocket Center, where we are the home of Space Camp. Here we're going to do a step-by-step -step mission analysis of the Apollo program. 2019 marks the golden anniversary, 50 years of Apollo 11 landing on the moon. With the missions of Mercury and Gemini, the earlier manned missions, we are focusing on that directive from President John F. Kennedy of landing a man on the moon by the end of the decade in 1969. So let's go on this exploration together, mission by mission, step by step until that giant leap for mankind that we'll make on the moon July 20, 1969. First, I believe that this nation should commit itself to achieving the goal before this decade is out of landing a man on the moon and returning him safely to the earth. No single space project in this period will be more impressive to mankind or more important for the long-range exploration of space, and none will be so difficult or expensive to accomplish. NASA's Apollo program was a combination of hard work and dedication from thousands of engineers and scientists working together, mostly at Marshall Space Flight Center, but other NASA facilities as well. That joint effort allowed the Saturn V rocket and all the astronauts the ability to launch off of Earth and step foot on the lunar surface. NASA's Apollo program was a monumental scientific effort. It took lots of space technologies, perfecting a spacesuit like the one that we have here, one that can withstand the temperatures and the difference of pressure from Earth to the Moon. Every NASA program has a set of goals or objectives. The Apollo program had the following program objectives. To land Americans on the Moon and return them safely to Earth. To establish the technology to meet other national interests in space. To achieve preeminence and superiority in space for the United States to carry out a program of intensive scientific exploration of the moon, to develop man's ability to work in the lunar environment. Each mission tells a story. Each story is presented by the mission patch. Behind me is a collection of Apollo mission patches that each crew put together, and those crews working together to tell their story of what their mission objective would be. Testing equipment is part of mission development. Testing is done to ensure crew safety, but sometimes testing can result in tragedy. That's what happened for the AS-204 test, renamed Apollo 1, in honor of the three fallen astronauts, Commander Gus Grissom, Senior Pilot Ed White, and Pilot Roger Chaffee. Apollo 1 was designed to test the capability of the Apollo Command Module. At 6.31 p.m. on January 27, 1967, a fire breaks out within the cabin. All three astronauts passed away in the overpressurized oxygen environment of the capsule, due more to toxic fumes within the capsule than to burn sustained in the fire. This accident grounds manned missions for the Apollo program for over a year and a half. Because of the test failure of AS-204, the Apollo capsules are fully stripped, rebuilt, and redesigned. Some of the fixed flaws both in the capsule and other areas included cabin atmosphere adjustments, 60% oxygen and 40% nitrogen, and gradually changing over to 100% oxygen at about 2 pounds per square inch. The hatch door would open outward and could be opened in less than 10 seconds. All flammable materials in the cabin were replaced with self-extinguishing materials. Plumbing and wiring were covered with protective insulation. Over 1,400 wiring problems were corrected. Nylon astronaut suits were replaced with suits made of fireproof beta cloth. Astronaut bravery and dedication is best summarized by this quote by astronaut Gus Grissom. If we die, we want people to accept it. We're in a risky business, and we hope that if anything happens to us, it will not delay the program. The conquest of space is worth the risk of life. Apollo missions two through six were unmanned extensive scientific and engineering equipment tests. These tests proved the reliability of the Saturn rockets 
and the equipment leading to the first manned Apollo 7 mission. Apollo 7 was NASA's first manned Apollo mission. This mission was conducted in Earth orbit and used the Saturn 1B launch vehicle. During the 11-day flight, the crew conducted several tests on the spacecraft systems and conducted the first live TV program from an American spacecraft. All three crew members, Wally Schirra, Walt Cunningham, and Don Ezell, developed bad head colds during the mission. Despite their discomfort, the astronauts completed their mission objectives, demonstrating the resilience and adaptability needed by humans in space. The success of earlier flights, problems in the development of the lunar module, and concerns that the Soviet Union might be ready to launch cosmonauts around the moon led NASA to change the flight plan for the next Saturn V mission. NASA ultimately changed from the unpiloted Earth orbiting mission to a crewed flight around the moon. The Apollo 8 crew, Frank Borman, Jim Lovell, and Bill Anders were the first crew to fly atop the powerful Saturn V moon rocket, ultimately spending 20 hours orbiting the moon on Christmas Eve, 1968 the crew gave a memorable reading from the book of Genesis, and while in orbit, Anders took the iconic Earthrise photo. With the Apollo 8 trip around the moon completed, it was time for NASA to start seriously planning to land astronauts there. The next step was the Apollo 9 mission, the first to carry a lunar module into orbit. Though the mission stayed in Earth orbit, Commander James McDivitt, and lunar module pilot Rusty Schweigert separated the lunar module from the command module and flew independently for six hours, testing the lunar module's systems. Schweigert conducted a spacewalk with the lunar module to test the extravehicular mobility unit, or EMU, spacesuit astronauts would wear on the moon. The next test of the lunar module was conducted above the moon. Apollo 10 was a full dress rehearsal for the first lunar landing. The crew tested all aspects of the mission, even showing the initial docking of Charlie Brown with the lunar module Snoopy on the first colored television transmission from space. Commander Thomas Stafford and lunar module pilot Eugene Cernan flew the lunar module Snoopy for eight hours, coming within 10 miles of the lunar surface and passing over the Sea of Tranquility, where Apollo 11 would land. I'm going to step off the land now. That's one small step for man. One giant leap for mankind. Those words were spoken by Commander Neil Armstrong on the historic July 20, 1969 Apollo 11 mission. Down this ladder came astronaut Neil Armstrong, where from this ladder landed and stepped foot on the moon. That was the first time man has ever left Earth and landed on another body outside of our home planet. Achieving the goal that President John F. Kennedy had set in 1961, before Americans had even orbited the Earth. It was the quick decision of Neil Armstrong during the Apollo 11 mission that allowed the Eagle to land safely. The original landing spot in the Sea of Tranquility was to be a craterous area, but his quick wit and seeing that crater, he moved the Eagle into a safe landing spot, proving a safe landing for the first manned mission to land on the moon. Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin explored the Sea of Tranquility area around their lunar landing site for more than two hours. They collected soil and rock samples, set up experiments, planted an American flag, and left behind medallions honoring the Apollo 1 crew, and a plaque reading, We came in peace for all mankind. Apollo 12 had a rough mission start. Upon its launch, the Saturn V moon rocket was struck by lightning. The lightning strikes interrupted a few systems, but the rocket launch and safety of the crew was not at all affected. Among the many mission objectives for Apollo 12 was to recover pieces of Surveyor 3, a robotic lander that
that had been on the moon for more than two years. Scientists wanted to study the effects of the lunar environment on the spacecraft. After a pinpoint landing in the Ocean of Storms region of the moon, that gave the crew easy access to Surveyor 3. They also deployed an experiment package that included a seismometer to detect moon quakes. But before leaving lunar orbit, they jettisoned the lunar module's ascent stage, so it crashed onto the surface, providing a controlled experiment to assess the seismometers. Here we have on display a piece of Apollo 12 moon rock sample. So this moon rock sample is one of 842 pounds worth of Apollo material collected off the lunar surface from the six manned missions that landed on the moon. Those materials have been analyzed and studied by scientists and geologists to compare Earth and lunar soil as well as rock deposits. This sample that we happen to have in front of us is an igneous rock, meaning it comes from a volcanic eruption. This type of volcanic igneous rock is also called basalt, very common both on Earth and on the lunar surface. Houston, we have a problem. Apollo 13 has been called NASA's successful failure because the crew never landed on the moon, but they made it home safely after an explosion crippled their command module Odyssey. One oxygen tank, insulation and switch, which should have been modified during an upgrade, were damaged during a construction test. When the heater was turned on during flight, the tank exploded, depleting almost all of the power from the command module Odyssey and forcing the crew to use the lunar module Aquarius as a lifeboat. NASA used the moon's gravity as a slingshot to send them back towards the Earth. Jim Lovell, Fred Hayes, and Jack Swigert came home safely thanks to the mission control team's improvised procedures and their own ability to implement them. Notable for the return of America's first astronaut, Alan Shepard, Apollo 14 was probably the smoothest lunar landing to that point. The crew spent more than nine hours outside the lunar module and set up several experiments. Shepard set a new distance record by walking more than 9,000 feet on the lunar surface, all while pulling a handcart carrying their tools and samples. Shepard is the first Apollo commander to use the red stripes on his suit to show the difference between the commander and LM pilot. They were to be used on the Apollo 13 mission, but due to the accident, they remained unused. The Apollo missions 15, 16, and 17 had the advantage of a lunar roving vehicle. This lunar rover vehicle, also called the Moon Buggy, provided a valuable tool for the astronauts to travel further and see more of the lunar surface, allowing them also the ability to collect more rock and lunar soil samples along the way. The lunar rover had a design's top speed of eight miles per hour. The lunar rover carried both Commander David Scott and lunar module pilot James Irwin on the lunar surface for more than 17 miles as they stopped along the way to set up experiments and collect 170 pounds of lunar samples. Before leaving the lunar surface, Scott conducted an experiment to test Galileo's theory that objects in a vacuum without air resistance would fall at the same rate. He dropped a geological hammer and a falcon feather which hit the ground at the same time, proving Galileo correct. Like Apollo 15, Apollo 16 also took advantage of having a lunar rover. As Commander John Young and lunar module pilot Charlie Duke drove more than 16 miles over three moonwalks, collecting 209 pounds of samples. They also set a moon buggy speed record on the moon of 11 miles per hour. Problems forced mission controllers to cut the flight short by a day, but the return trip included a spacewalk by command module pilot Ken Mattingly to retrieve film from a camera in the service module. Behind me is the Apollo 16's heat shield. This capsule was named Casper, like the friendly ghost by the Apollo 16 crew. 
Notice it almost looks like a lunar surface map. So that lunar surface map has been hit by all kinds of craters and sustained lots of damage, very similar to what this heat shield did as it re-entered Earth's atmosphere. But through that heat and damage, it provided vital protection for the astronauts that were safe inside. The last Apollo mission featured the most extensive lunar exploration of the program. With three moonwalks that each lasted more than seven hours, while the crew stayed on the moon for more than three days. Commander Gene Cernan and Lunar Module Pilot Harrison Schmidt collected 244 pounds of lunar material. Dr. Harrison Schmidt is the first and only Apollo astronaut scientist that walked on the moon. He was a civilian academic geologist. His expertise in geology played a vital role in collecting the largest sample size of lunar material for an Apollo mission. The Apollo 17 crew collected 244 pounds of lunar material. The combined Apollo program lunar sample collection totaled 842 pounds. These samples and those from the previous missions continued to reveal more about the moon as new tools and techniques are developed and applied. The previously planned Apollo 18 through 20 missions were all canceled due to budget cuts and needed focus on other forms of space exploration and technology. We covered roughly an area the span of the continent of Africa on the lunar surface. We looked at high areas, low areas, craterous areas, flatlands, all on the surface of the moon, comparing its geological structures and features to our own home planet, the Earth. The Apollo program still to this day is mankind's most monumental achievement, launching men from planet Earth inside the engineering marvel Saturn V moon rocket, traveling, landing, and stepping foot on the lunar surface nearly 240,000 miles away and returning safely to Earth. No other country but the United States has accomplished this task of setting men on the surface of the moon. NASA again is making one small step for all man to return to the moon and making plans for one giant leap for mankind to firmly step on the surface of Mars. Using America's next great ship, NASA's Space Launch System. For more information on NASA missions, visit www.nasa.gov. And if you're interested in any programs at the U.S. Space and Rocket Center, visit us at www.rocketcenter.com.